Well, folks, never too early to start making those Hoop Fest plans, and Spokane Hoop Fest wants you to know that volunteer registration will open February 1st. Team registration begins on March 8th. Find out more at uh, SpokaneHoopFest.net. You can also follow them on social media to stay in the know. Eagles winning the uh, rebound battle 17-15 as we take a look at the halftime statistics very briefly. Uh, great shooting clip for Eastern Washington as well. And the free throw line, that's been a big discrepancy here. Look at the Eagles, just three shots from the line, 12 for Montana State. Despite that, still a three-point advantage for the Eagles as we begin the second half. It'll be Kidd who had a lights-out first half running the point here for the Eagles. Yeah, he's going to try to start, start where he left off, continue to be aggressive. Davison, an aggressive take himself, and he lays it up and in off the glass. Great take by Davison. Strong to his right hand, elevated, and was able to finish that basket. Davison now a team-high 16. Blevins, on the other hand, with the left hand. And one, Peetling will pick up his third, picking up right where he left off in the first half where he started the game early in foul trouble. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one for him. Blevin made a great move, got the contact, and was able to finish that one. Blevin's just a 56% shooter from the line this season, a transfer from Southern Miss back in 2016. He misses, and there will be no three-point play. It's a three-point game. Eagles up 47 to 44. Eastern coming in of two and three in the big sky, including that huge win against Montana, 78-71, their last time out eight days ago. Montana being aggressive on the defensive end, trying to keep Eastern out of the middle. Kid drawing a lot of attention, trying to get it to Peetling. It's picked up on the steal by Hall. And he turns it right back over into the hands of Davison. Yeah, it's just good hustle by Davison. Not giving up on the play, continuing to work. Eagles kind of caught in no man's land there as Kid just tried to throw it off a defender's leg out of bounds. Didn't work, but another miss. This is by Blevins. Boy, this game is going to get physical here. There's a knockdown, drag him out shot. Davison able to go and finish, and he's going to go to the line. And that's two, two great finishes for Davison, going all the way to the basket and finishing um, this, this start of the second half. Both teams are going to have to do a better job of taking care of the ball. Um, got a little sloppy the last couple possessions, but um, they're both staying aggressive. Davison has really emerged here at the midway point of the season. He had a stretch of seven consecutive starts last season, of course, then made his way back to the bench. And, Davison has really found his comfort zone, I think, right now. Yeah, he's going to need to be a scorer for Eastern. Um, they're going to need that scorer, the guy that can, you know, slash to the basket and finish and also knock down shots. Remember the old Daryl chant? I don't know if you remember that from, from Major League Baseball with Daryl Strawberry. I think we've got our own here for Harold Frey. Eastern Washington Flight Club is right behind us, the student section. You come up with new and imaginative and creative ways to get inside the opposition's head. And certainly, have the Eagles been in Frey's head? He has not been able to get going so far. Yeah, they've done a good job containing him. Kid, no good. Aiken was trying to follow with a rebound. Frey with a lob. Blevins with a second chance, and he converts. 50 to 46, Bobcats back in it. Down by four. We will take the timeout. Shante Leggins beside himself here in Cheney. We're next up to a commercial break. We'll take it. We'll be back with more from this Big Sky Showdown between the Cats and the E's. Folks, be sure to join us next Saturday. Gonzaga women's basketball hosting Santa Clara. Your tip-off at 2 p.m. Gonzaga women's basketball. That's next Saturday right here on SWX.
Eastern Washington, 89, Montana State, 87. All right, I want to listen to that one. There's the announcement from yeah. the public address announcer. Eastern Washington women winning in overtime in Bozeman by two. Yeah, it sounded like a close game, and uh, they got done in overtime. Way to go, Coach Shu and the Eags getting a big win. Hey, remember the last time we were doing a broadcast, the Montana women lost to Eastern Washington. So now it'll be up to the men to try to get another sweep. That does not happen very often against the great Montana school. There's a three. Aiken drops the three. And he's a guy who's he has got a great shot. His numbers don't reflect that. They want him to keep shooting. Oh, definitely. He has a great shot. He's able to knock it down from the outside. And it's just a matter of him just getting his confidence. And with the Montana game he played last week, he shot it great. He played great. And um, he's continuing that confidence. Frey looking for confidence. Knocked down that shot. He would love to see more of that ball going through the cylinder. Has struggled over the last two and a half games. Here's Hunt. Hunt with a little jab step. He'll put up the jumper and knocks it down. Hunt playing his 100th career game here this afternoon. And for Hunt, that was a great shot. Created that jab step to create some space and was able to knock the shot down. Uh, it looked really nice. Frey starting to feel it. He gets his second shot in a row to go. Yeah, Frey can get it going, and when he gets it going, it's, it's tough to stop him. And that was with the offhand. The crafty lefty having to use the right there. Eastern going right back down to Hunt. They like That's that the matchup. Same spot, same spot. Yeah. And there's contact. It's going to be a reach on Newman. As we'll get another look at Luka Vulikic coming back into the contest. Vulikic started last season at point guard for eight games before losing the season to a foot ailment. Trying to get healthy and right. He looks to be back to 100%. And yeah, Montana State going back to that zone. Kid didn't go. His first miss, but a rebound by Aiken. And there's Hunt. Hunt for three. They're all going down here in Reese Court. Yeah, that was a tough shot for Hunt. He might have had an open player, but he's feeling confident right now, and he was able to knock it down. Hunt now up to 11. He's in the double figures. There's a floater in the lane, no good. Hall couldn't get the rebound. Aiken ahead, no, oh, kid just couldn't hang on to it. It was a little bit behind him. Now a lob the other way. Hall's going to throw up a three. That's what he does. Yeah, he, he, can stop, he can stop the runs himself by just getting open looks. That was a beautiful shot. Got his player in the air and able to sky over him and knock it down. Hall with that, now above his season scoring average of 19. He's up to 22. He's got 369 career three-pointers. It's a Big Sky Conference record. Great pass there by Hunt. Vulakic can't finish. Hall with a skip pass into the corner to Ricketts. Hall attracts so much attention, he's able to get his teammates some good looks. Frey stepping back, no good, stripped away. The Eagles have a three on none. Davis in the throwdown. I don't know if I've ever seen three players all heading towards the basket with nobody between them. Yeah, they got they got that steal and were able to get off to the, the races there. Felt and like an NBA All-Star game. <laughs> it did there. <laughs> Hall, no good on the three-pointer, hunt the rebound. Yeah, and, and for Montana State, they're going to have to get, get some other guys scoring. Davison over to Vulikic. Jacob Davison, what a game for him. <laughs> it's a hula hoop. They may want to just check the net and the rim to see if this is regulation, folks. Kim Aiken Jr. knocks down the three. The Eagles now 10 for 20 from distance. They can't miss. They're up by 10. 63-53, timeout on the floor. Basketball coverage here on SWX being brought to you by Granite Concepts. Kitchens, bathrooms, and more. Beauty set in stone. See for yourself at graniteconceptsnw.com. Welcome back to Cheney. 
We mentioned the 10 for 20 from distance for the Eagles. They're also winning the rebound battle, 24-18. Fast break points, 12 to five. We saw the break, the three on zero for Eastern Washington. This offense is clicking on all cylinders. What's the difference? Uh, I think they're just playing with a lot more confidence. Um, they're seeing their shots go down and they're continuing to shoot them. I mean, they're, both teams are shooting great percentages. Montana State's at 46 and Eastern's at 50. Um, right now it's not about knocking down shots, it's just about not turning the ball over. Hall being defended by Kidd. Hall sitting on 22 points. There's a foul, it's gonna be called. Oh, excuse me, it's a travel on Blevins. And Davison has 21. Look at all these scores. Hall 22, Davison 21, Kidd 15, Blevins 12, Hunt 11. Yeah, the, the, the scores are really shooting well tonight. Eagles up by 10. And there's going to be a foul on Ricketts. Ricketts, a great shooter from distance this season, just under 46% coming in. He's averaging just under 10 points per game at 9.9. .9. They need him on the floor. Yeah, if you're MSU, you want to see him take some more shots, look to get open and be aggressive. Just with that percentage, you got to have him shoot some more been the story for for Eastern Washington uh, too you talk about the high scores that they've had in years past Bogdan Belisnuk the all-time scoring uh, holder and then before that Jacob Wiley Tyler Harvey when you look at Montana State you're going hey look Tyler Hall you can get your points who's going to fill that void what's going to be the difference between a 60 point game and an 80 point game yeah I mean you, you just want to shut down everybody else and make it uncomfortable for them because um, Tyler Hall's a great scorer, and he's going he's gonna to create a shot and knock him down. It's just, can you stop the other guys like Rickett and the other shooters? That's four fouls now on Montana State as a team. The Eagles very nearly turned it over, and we mentioned fouls. Lassie Nickarinen has just picked up his fourth. Four fouls on Nickarinen, so he's going to have to get out of the contest and off the floor. The guy who's averaging just three points per game, but can heat up. Had a great homestand against Portland State and Sacramento State, where he's six for eight from the field and 10 for 12 from the line. Yeah, he, Lossie does a great job just being a floor general out there, creating opportunities for his teammates and getting them to sets. Good defense on Kidd there as he comes away empty handed. Little spin move there by Hall. Hall trying to put his defender uh, Hunt on skates. Uh, the Cats getting a little discombobulated on offense. They'll have to reset. Yeah, Easter setting up that zone, trying to make it difficult for Hall to get the ball. Daniels dropping off to Kirby. Kirby off the high glass, no good. Hall chases it down, and it's pulled down by Daniels. Fresh shot clock here, 12 minutes to play. There's a foul. Ricketts will go to the free throw line for two. It'll be on Kidd. He picks up his third. Yeah, and that was a good move by Ricketts. I mean, driving left, pull up shot in that zone. He saw the gap and was able to create. And then for Montana State, just getting those 50-50 balls right now, Eastern hasn't been able to get them, and Montana State's been grabbing them. There's another clear advantage right now for MSU. That's the Cats' 14th free throw attempt, a 10 free throw advantage over Eastern Washington, which has just four shots from the charity stripe. That can happen for a variety of reasons, but clearly that's an advantage that Montana State is looking to capitalize on. Yeah, and, um, Eastern got in that double bonus pretty fast in the, in the first half, and Hall took advantage of that and was able to get, get to the free throw line. Kid to bring it up the floor here. For Eastern Washington trying to string together back-to-back -to -back wins in the big sky after beating the preseason conference favorite, Montana, here eight days ago, came at Reese Court. It'll be Montana State basketball. And we'll take the timeout. Eagles up by eight, 63, 55. You're watching Big Sky Basketball on SWX. All right, Big Sky Basketball here in Cheney, Washington, where Eastern Washington leads it by eight, 63, 55. Look around the Big Sky Conference here. Two games going final 
in Utah, Southern Utah, winning by five against Sacramento State. Sacramento State still winless in conference play. And in Flagstaff, NAU holds off Portland State 82-75. So Portland State with that loss now drops to one and four in conference play. Northern Colorado alone at the top, five and one in league play, taking on Weber State, which is at four and one. So that's a battle for first place here at 6.05. And then not too far from here on the Palouse in Idaho, Moscow, the Vandals will play host to Montana. Great crowd on hand for this one. Thank you for joining us here on TV, or maybe you're watching on replay. Perhaps you were able to watch this game live here in Cheney. Montana State with the basketball trailing by eight. They've fallen behind as many as 10 in this contest. And this is known traditionally as a great second half team. They're looking for a second half burst here this afternoon. They're gonna need it. Yeah, Montana State's done a great job the second half just moving the ball around. And great take by Blevins there, finishing over Peedling. Blevins with the make there to now make it a 63-57 game. He's up to 14. Yeah, he's having a great game. He's attacking that basket. He's knocked down a three-pointer and just done a great job um, helping haul out on the scoring load for Montana State. Davison with contact. That'll be on Daniels, who picks up his first. That's five team fouls now for Montana State. So they're close to getting into the bonus. Yes. Well, we mentioned Montana State and what they've done in second halves this year. Ten straight games they've had a higher shooting percentage after halftime than the first half. They've shot the ball better after halftime. Something to watch out for. And now on the runner, in and out, no good from Daniels. There's a rebound and one for Blevins. Yeah, another great finish by Blevins. Just being around the basket and able to finish after creating contact. He's doing a great job. So another trip to the line here as we have another look. Yeah. Eastern's going to have to do a better job boxing out um, as a team collectively. Bad things it. happen when defenders get up in the air. Yeah. There's Blevins from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Related to Damian Lillard, who actually came to watch Blevins courtside for his birthday during a win against North Dakota, their cousins. Talk about some, some great genes in that family tree. Yes. Hunt with a right hand, no good. Well defended there by Blevins, who stayed at home on defense. Yeah, smart defensive play by him, just staying straight up, making the hunt score over him. Good ball movement here by the Cats. So oh, drop the ball to Kirby. That kind of slowed things down. Whip pass, corner three. Ricketts is short. Long rebound. He follows up his own miss. Gets it back outside. Blevins for three, and it's good. It's his second make of the contest. He came in just one for 21 from the three line. And that's what can happen after you make a couple easy buckets down low and some free throws. You catch it at the three-point line, you don't even think about it. You can just knock it down, and he scored the last couple of possessions for Montana State. The Cats on a 9-0 run to close within one. Looking for a stop here. Peatling, no good. And now the Cats have a chance to take the lead. Their last lead coming with 529 in the first. They won't get it here. Good D by Peedling down low, just creating a tough, tough shot for Blevins. Kid very slow to bring it up for Eastern Washington. Scoreless in their last almost five minutes. Hunt puts an end to that. That shot just hanging around the rim, and now he's a perfect four for four from the field from three-point range. And that was a, a great pass by for Eastern on the on the wing with Hunt. I mean, just wide open. Frey, no good on the three. Offensive rebound, Kirby. In and out, no good. Four-point game. Kid. Whoa, look at that take. My goodness, what a shot by Kid. 
so fast and so quick and just able to get it on the rim and soft touch. That's tough. Going right, finishing left. Eagles up by six. Make it three. Ricketts knocks down another corner three-pointer. Yeah, great shot by Ricketts. Able to knock that one down. Boy, this is just a highlight reel stretch we're having here in the second half. Eight minutes to play, a three-point lead for Eastern. Trying to pick up back-to-back -back wins in the big sky. Vulakic converts. Yeah, great cut by Luka there. Get an easy scoring opportunity. They're going to need him to get some points on the board. On the other end, Hunt defending. In and out, no good from Kirby. Kirby the sophomore, who's in double figures in six of his last nine. Yeah, and Kirby being 6'11", he just has to go right up with that to the basket, not fade. Um, he was wide open there, and you just have to knock that down. On the other end, that shot will go by Bulakic. Boy, that put a nice end to that 9-0 run. The Eagles now four for their last four. Yeah, Eastern likes having Luka on the block. I mean, 6-7 point guard creates uh, mismatches down there. Blevins is fouled on the way in. And we will take the timeout as Kidd has picked up his fourth. But he's going off offensively. 17 points for Kidd. He can score from anywhere and everywhere. 72, 65 eats. Today's college basketball coverage on SWX is being brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. There's our friend Swoop. And there are the Eagles. Tell you what, it's been a game of runs, hasn't it? Definitely. I mean, each team shot the ball tremendously well um, the second half. And it'll come down to getting a couple stops and getting those 50-50 balls down the stretch here. We talked about how back and forth the last time out was when Eastern Washington won in Cheney in overtime, 84-79. Ten ties, 11 lead changes. We felt like that was going to be the case here in the first half. We saw five ties, three lead changes. Nothing's changed, though. Nine-nothing run by Montana State closed them within one. Yeah. And they did that with Blevins attacking the basket and able to finish and also knocking down a three-point shot. He's, he's done a great job this second half for Montana State. Montana State is shooting at a 47% clip from three. Uh, they've committed eight turnovers. Eastern Washington, 13. You would think this would be a different contest if not for the fact that the Eagles have made 11 of 22 from distance, and they've just under 60% shooting from the floor overall. Yeah, I think that's been the difference is the, the, the three-pointers for each team. Turnovers Blevins. are going to play a, a factor down the stretch, especially uh, with Eastern already having 13. Two makes by Blevins. So he heads to the bench for a rest. Sam Newman comes on. You will not see Kidd for a while. He's sitting on the bench with four fouls. Yeah, Perry taking over. Uh, we'll see what he can do here. We all know he can shoot. Here's Vulakic over to Gibson. Who's it going to be? Who's going to step up? And there's contact underneath. It'll be on the Cats as Peatling, I think, got hooked there. On uh, Schuaker. So Schuaker picking up his second. He, he hasn't played many minutes, and he's already got two fouls. Yeah, he's intense down there. He's he's covering that middle up, trying to trying to stop everything. Eagles have led by as many as 10 in this contest. There's a long three. Jack Perry, no good. Peatling trying to get the rebound. He was boxed out nicely by Newman. Yeah, if you're Eastern, I think you take that shot by Jack Perry. He's wide open. You want him to shoot those. No good on the three it was Tyler Hall. Hall still sitting on 22. Yeah. He's doing a great job getting open, knocking down shots. I mean, those will fall for him, being the type of scorer he is. Hall overall now 7 for 16. He's cooled off a little bit after that hot start, but he has contributed five rebounds and an assist. And that's number three on Schuacher. So Schuacher with three fouls in three minutes. That's not, that's like Marcus Cousins last night on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and great to see him back on the floor doing his thing. That was, that was fun to watch. And not fun if you're, you're uh, 
I guess the Clippers or any other team with any hopes of winning games in the Western Conference. No, what they say the first time five All Stars have started. Yeah. Or was that the? They call it the Team USA lineup. Oh man, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, and now Demarcus Cousins. Yeah. That'd be the tantamount to taking. Imagine if you could t put together a an All Big Sky Conference team and then put them on the floor at the same time. Yeah, that's. Not That's, even fair. No, it's it's amazing what they're able to accomplish. Peatling making that free throw. And it's a seven-point game. Frey out of a trap, and then Peatling flashes out of that once he picks up the dribble. Eastern picking it up on defense, trying to make Montana State uncomfortable. Well, they're certainly doing that. Look at this swarming defense from the Eagles. Great switches here on the doubles. Frey trying to break free. Four on the shot clock. It's going to be Hall. Hall from above the circle, and it goes. <laughs> That's clutch. <laughs> that is. Get the ball in his hand when the, the shot clock's winding down. Tough shot. Created some space, stepping back, and able to knock it down on Peedling. You w use the word uncomfortable. I don't know if Hall has ever been uncomfortable handling or shooting a basketball in his life. Yeah, he's he's super confident, and he's able to knock him down, which which is huge. There's a dime as Peatling finishes on the pass by Jesse Hunt. Hunt's a great all-around player, second in the conference in rebounding, 10th in points per game, 11 in assists per game. There's an open look at three from Ricketts from the wing. You can't leave him open. You cannot. Shooting 47% from three-point land. That's the one guy you cannot leave open. He knocks it down again. They are 9 for 19, just under 50%. That's from three. Overall, 44%. Davison from the free throw line looking for help. As Ricketts almost got a hand on it defensively. Shot clock starting to wind down. Here's Vulakic. Vulakic for three. Boy, every time Eastern just able to find an answer. And Brian Fish. Very upset with what's going on the floor. He's very close to getting the technical. We'll take the timeout. We will not, but here's another look. And for Luca, that's a great shot for him because he didn't even have to think about it. The shot clock is winding down. He's able to catch and knock it down. Fish just now rejoining the bench after giving the officials an earful. Our officials today are Ronnie Hernandez, Johnny Harrington, and Charles Rizdak. Rizdak, excuse me. And if you're Montana State here, you want to keep attacking the basket and have somebody else step up besides Hall and knock those shots down. Because you know, Hall's going to score. You just need somebody else to just step up. And Ricketts done it the last couple times, knocking down his shots. And for Eastern, they're going to they have to continue to stay aggressive and not not settle for tough shots, but keep moving that ball around. It's, it's no surprise that Montana State's hitting the three. We see, you know, they're nine for 19. They come in 8.9 threes per game. That's seven, the 75th in the country. They also get to the line great. And that's been a hallmark of the, of the fish era. They've progressed every year. They're up to 21.9 free throw attempts per game this season. But is it going to be Frey? Can Harold Frey start getting going? They need somebody. He's sitting at nine points, but it's taken eight shots to do it. He's three for eight from the field. There's Hall. Hall no good, and he wants a foul. He did not get it. Yeah, there he is again, just knocking down another tough shot. Oh, it did go in. I apologize. Oh, yeah, it went in. It was a, <laughs> that was a tough one. That was really good. He wanted the end one. Yeah, he felt his legs got hit, and he might be right. Five-point game, four minutes to play. Davison with a gap in the defense. Reverse lay-in. What a take for Davison. Uh, that's a, just a... Athletic play right there. Going up on the left side, but finishing on the right. Hall springs free. Can't get the free uh, three-pointer to go. Peatling chases down the loose ball. Big stop for the Eagles. That would have been a big three. Hall's got 26. And he's doing it from all over, not just three-pointers. He's doing it from driving, pull-ups mid-range. He's doing it all for Montana State right now. Now Ricketts with a mid-range, and that'll go. Big basket for the Bobcats. 
He's up to 15 now, and it's a five-point game with three minutes to play. <laughs> Hang on to your hats. Fasten those seat belts. Yeah, and Montana State putting Eastern on their heels right now. They're being the aggressor on the offensive end, and Eastern's not staying aggressive. Remember, they're in the bonus now, so it should Montana State need to. They can play the foul game, too. Bulakic to Hunt. Hunt with two on the shot clock. It's short. No good. Kirby the rebound, and the Bobcats can make it a one-possession game here. Here's a look at three. Ricketts can't knock it down. Bulakic got the rebound. Bulakic putting the pedal to the metal, bringing it up the floor. And now the Eagles settle into the half-court offense. They can take this down to two minutes. Yeah, and that was a good shot by Rickett on the other end. He's knocked down his last three shots and got a look a good open three, and you want to see him shoot those. Off the pick and roll. Eight on the shot clock. Here's Kidd going to work. Steps up. No good on the three. Peatley got the putback. What a play by Mason. Yeah, he just doesn't stop moving. Yeah, you know, he's just a ball of energy down there and just able to create that, that tip in on that offensive end and finish it. Peatling has 12. On the other end, there's an and one. Devin Kirby will go to the line with a chance at a three-point play to make it a four-point ball game. 145 to play. Eastern 83, Montana State 78. Your final 145 coming up. All right, folks, welcome back. Montana State looking for a spark down by five. Here's what's at stake coming in as MSU four and two in conference play. You always try to steal away a home game if you can here on the road. And Eastern Washington, tell you what, Mark Axon, this team is feeling confidence right now. This team has been decimated by injuries. Very challenging non-conference schedule. You get a couple wins in a row against teams like Montana, Montana State, all of a sudden the sky is the limit. Oh, it just opens things up in the big sky. Um, just the, these last two games for Eastern especially, um, they've just been a different team. They played with confidence. They've hustled. Um, they've scored. Uh, they've struggled to score, um, you know, in the preseason. Um, for them, this is a big game protecting their home court. And for Montana State also, um, getting a win and staying staying prevalent in the top top four teams. Devin Kirby will be at the free throw line. This to cap off a three-point play. Kirby makes it. 66% shooter, converts on the three-point play. We've got ourselves a four-point ball game. Yeah, it's going to come down to the stretch. Who can execute? As Vulakic sets things up here. Final 90 seconds of this contest in regulation. Eagles have not trailed in the second half. Kidd got the defender way up, but he's called for the travel. He can't believe it. They say his foot slipped. Oh, boy, did he get the defender up in the air. Yeah, that's a tough one. It's a great move by Kidd. I'm getting all the way to the basket and have that taken away. Another look. This will be interesting. Uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one for him. His front one slipped. I'm not sure the back one did. Big possession here for MSU. Chance to make it a one possession game. Here's Frey. Frey with a pass. He had a good look. Instead, it's a shot from. They're going to call three from the corner. Are they going to want to look at it immediately? Yeah, the rest are going to take a look at this. So they call it a three. The call on the floor is a three to make it a one-point game. But they're going to have another look here on the Big Sky replay. And again, at this crucial point in the game, you, you don't want to look at it, you know, after during a timeout. And they're going to call now two. Yeah, and then there's Blevin again. This, this second half, he's played so well. He's knocked down shots from the outside. He's finished, you know, second opportunities down low. He's done a great job. So they have taken the points off the board. So it's a two-point game. Eastern Washington, 83. 
Montana State 81. So Blevins, we talk about the secondary score. Who will it be? Well, Blevins has very quietly gone now for 23 points. Yeah, he's had a great second half. Um, he's really stepped up for Montana State and done on both ends of the floor. He's got a couple turnovers, a couple steals. Blevins had eight points in the first half. Peatling can't handle the ball. Ball out of bounds remains Eagle basketball. That's a big break for Eastern. It was. Peatling did a great job setting up that seal on the weak side and just wasn't able to corral it. And they got they got lucky it went off Montana State. Peatling has three fouls. Davison playing with four. Kid with four. Eight on the shot clock. Final 40 seconds, Davison no good on the runner. Peatling another offensive rebound. They will have to foul here. And that's Peatling for you. I mean, he never stops working. Uh, I'm just amazed the battery that kid has. They're going to try to make the stop here. There is about a nine second differential. So they call off the dogs. They will not foul. 10 on the shot clock, 18 seconds on the clock. Here's Kidd, who's been dynamite tonight. Inside of Peatling, he broke free. The foul was beforehand with five on the shot clock, 14 seconds to play. Peatling going to the free throw line. And that was and just a timeout a taken by Brian Fish. Yeah, a great seal by Peatling. Uh, you have to know they're going to go down to him, and he just did a great job stepping in front of defender and sealing off. Um, Montana State got lucky they called that a foul because he just grabbed and went right up for that for a layup. And Peatling is a 71% free throw shooter on the season. Has been Eastern's leading scorer in the five of six games since he's come back from injury. Been the leading rebounder three times during that stretch. I mean, he's got 12 points, six rebounds. It's been a relatively quiet night for him, but you see how he's opened things up for everybody else. He does. He, I mean, he's someone you have to worry about down low. And, you know, next up on the free throw line, you know, what do you, what do, you do if you're up three points and Montana State gets the ball? Do you foul? Do you let him take the tough shot at the three to tie it? Um, I always have this debate. Um, when I was in Europe playing, my coach would always say foul. We give him free throws. So it's, it, it, it's, it differs with each mentality. We'll see what happens. Eastern in the bonus. This is a one and one situation for Pete Ling. And he, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, it's that kind of day. Yeah, that's just a home rim roll right there. Ooh. Soft touch. Boy, that was big. That would have left two points on the board. He misses the second and a rebound by Blevins. Three-point game, 10 seconds of play. Montana State needs a three to tie this up. Here's Frey. Frey looking. Here's Blevins up top, and he missed it. It kissed off the front iron, and with .9 on the clock, the Eagles have all but sealed it. Yeah, that was a good shot by Levin. He was wide open. He's knocked his last two shots down from that distance. Um, I think the whole crowd got nervous when he was that open. That was well executed by Montana State there. It's his first miss from distance tonight. Blevins, two for two from distance before that. 23 points. And my goodness, did the Eagles just dodge a bullet there. They did. They did. Um, somebody's matchup was missed there. I'm sure Coach will go over that in film session. Still a one-on-one -on -one situation, and that's your dagger. Montana State's only sliver of hope would have been to get a rebound on the front end there and to put up a heave at the buzzer. And Hunt uh, pushing this now to the limit here. Ten rebounds, 15, and a double-double. An historic day in Big Sky basketball history ends in a Eastern Washington victory. Tyler Hall and his record, not enough. 26 points for him, but the Eagles getting a balanced scoring effort. Davison with 23, Kidd with 17, Hunt with a double-double, and the Eastern Washington Eagles hang on for the win, 85-81 the final. Yeah, what a great game. Both teams came out there looking to score, started off hot, and just a, a tough finish down the stretch. Both teams executed, and um, Eastern just got away with the win today and um, protected their home court. 
We invite you, of course, to watch all of the highlights and post-game reaction on your local SWX affiliate across Washington, Idaho, and Montana. Hey, how about hats off to our man Colin McQuilkin producing this one, doing a great job. And Chad Simmons, a great guy for us, and we love him to death and uh, wish our best to the Simmons family as well. Folks, it's a wrap here tonight from Cheney as Eastern Washington hangs on for the win, back-to-back -back wins against the Montana schools. First the Grizz, now the Cats. 85-81 the final for Mark Axton. I'm Sam Adams saying so long from TD. It's been a great one here inside Reese Court. You have yourselves a great weekend. The Eagles winning by four.